Now with this project conveniently set up, I'm going to demo something that I usually don't get into in my Ripple training titles, and that is stereoscopic support in DaVinci Resolve. However, one of the big new features of 10.1 is a new way of handling stereo timelines and stereo media. So I at least want to give you a quick overview of what that means. And for those of you for whom this is relevant, you can dig into it much more deeply in an upcoming version of the DaVinci Resolve manual. So the main new feature in DaVinci Resolve is that instead of maintaining two timelines, one for the left eye and one for the right eye, DaVinci Resolve now uses a single timeline. Central to the way this works is the way that you treat stereo media. So for this to work properly, you have to go through a new step of synchronizing your stereo media and creating stereo clips. What I'm gonna do is select the master bin I'm going to add a new bin and I'm going to name this Stereo Clips. This is not something you had to do before, but this is a new step. It's important that you have your right eye media and your left eye media in separate folders. And you should note how the media is identified. In particular, this media is from a GoPro stereo rig. So it has 3D underscore R to identify all the right I clips and 3D underscore L to identify all the left eye clips and these are organized into separate bins. So this is great. It's exactly what I need. The stereo clips bin that I created is where I'm going to put the finally synced clips. And now I'm going to right click the master bin and choose stereo 3D sync. I get prompted with this window to choose the left eye folder. Click browse, open this up. There's my left eye folder. Choose the right eye folder, same thing. Choose the right eye folder. Once the output folder, this is the stereo clips bin that I created very deliberately. And now it wants the left and right identifiers. So 3D underscore R, actually that's the wrong identifier, and then 3D underscore R. At this point, all I have to do is click sync. It tells me six clips have been synced. I click OK, and now if I select stereo clips, there are my stereo clips. Now. We'll see how this works when I go into the edit page. Right click, choose create new timeline, and I am gonna uncheck empty timeline because I actually want to populate the timeline with all these clips. Now, it doesn't look like anything has happened, but if I go into the color page, I can see that these clips are being identified as 3D clips. That first clip actually is something completely different, so I don't have to worry about it. I've got these three 3D clips, and I can now open up the 3D palette. I can set vision to stereo, and I can set my output to anaglyph color just to make the point so that you can see what's going on. So this is a much easier way of managing 3D projects than what we had to do before. The thing to bear in mind is that all of the controls are largely the same, except that now instead of switching between left and right timelines, you're now switching between left and right eye clips. So these 3D clips actually contain the left eye media and the right eye media and Resolve is keeping track of all of this automatically. When I'm looking at the right eye media, this little 3D badge turns cyan. When I'm looking at the left eye media, it turns red. Another thing that's worth mentioning is that the auto processing options have been improved. 
they work the same. You select your media, you click the button, and automatic goodness happens. But the underlying algorithms have been improved, so that's very good news. And here's another fun fact. It's hard to see now because I don't actually have any appropriate media for this particular project. But were I to drill down far enough to find some media and right click, you can see there's now the option to add left eye and right eye identified mats. So that's extremely useful. If I put the media pool into list view, and scroll all the way over. You can see there are two new columns that are available. There's an S3D sync column. If I had to offset the left and right eye media at all for them to be in sync, this column would show me that offset. And audio offset shows me exactly the same thing for synchronized audio. These aren't all the new features, but the last thing I'll point out is if you right click in the color page gallery the copy grade preserve options have been vastly expanded first off copy grade preserve number of nodes which works with any grade you might want to be copying at all has been expanded to preserve 0 through 10 nodes so if you're one of those people that likes to work in a very standardized way and the first X number of nodes are the ones you're using to balance a particular shot with all nodes coming after those being for style. You can now use up to 10 nodes for standardized balancing operations that get preserved whenever you're copying grades around the timeline. However, you'll also notice that camera raw settings are separate input sizing is separate, and now convergence, floating windows, and auto alignment, all three of which are stereo settings, can be individually enabled or disabled for preservation when you're copying a grade in a stereo timeline. So, good thing to know. Last thing, if I jump over to the deliver page for this particular project, you'll now notice there's a new set of render stereoscopic 3D settings in the render settings. You can now choose to either render the left eye media by itself, the right eye media by itself, or you can render both eyes simultaneously as separate files, or using side-by-side, line-by-line, or anaglyph rendering, depending on whatever output your client needs. So all of these features work together to allow you to manage stereo projects and grading with a single timeline. So big step forward. I really like the way this works. There's going to be more detail about this in a future edition of the DaVinci Resolve Manual.